But what we have here, okay, so now the dermis. So the dermis is below the epidermis, and there are two main layers. We have the papillary layer. This is the outer more, uh, the more superficial layer of the dermis. And then you, below that, you have the reticular layer. So the papillary dermis, so papilla refers to, and you see this in anatomy all the time, and I, the anatomy, um, uh, yeah, people who did anatomy and physiology in the back, in the, back in the days, they used the word papilla, which is not Latin for nipples. So they think anything that's raised and slender looks like a nipple. So they think the papillary layer looks like a bunch of nipples. I didn't come up with that. That's the old school anatomist. But this is interesting too. So we have all have fingerprints and someone asked a real cool question about like um, genetics and twins and fingerprints. But yeah, what about our fingerprints? Well, the thing is that this papillary layer is very important in our fingerprints. So what if you take this ridge between the papillary layer and the epidermis and then you kind of just made and you just took this pattern and repeated it over and over and over again. What you see are all these ridges and valleys and from all the raised, raised bumps of the papilla and also the indentations between each papilla and the papillary layer. So this is where we get our fingerprints and our ridges and valleys is from that papillary layer that's pushing the epidermis and causing those little peaks and also those troughs as well. So let's see. So what we have here is that the dermis is also important in terms of like, okay, it's a connective tissue. This is why we have the cutaneous membrane. So we have the epidermis and the dermis, and this is full of collagen and elastin. So those protein fibers. So it's dense connective tissue because it has a lot of these protein fibers and not too much, or compared to other tissues, it has more protein fibers than it does a uh, jelly-like or fluid round substance. So the reticular dermis, so remember that root word reticulum refers to a network or some sort of mesh. So the reticular dermis is made up of a bunch of like collagen fibers and also some elastic fibers. So this is why you can take your skin and stretch it multiple directions. You can pull up, down, and you can put all this, this way and it kind of snaps back. So the way, it, I mean, if it was like only one direction, it would be easy to pull it in some directions and others or and if it didn't have elasticity, it wouldn't slap, snap back. But this is why people, as we age, we notice that sometimes our, the people who are older in age, they, their skin starts to sag. Well, the thing is that if these fibers start to break down, especially the elastic fibers, our skin loses the ability to snap back to its original shape. Okay, so then the reticular layer. So we have UV radiation and the UVB stops at the epidermis and where of the epidermis and dermis, but the UVA, this can actually penetrate deeper into your dermis. And what happens when it enters the reticular layer where you have all these proteins, these, um, this, the collagen and elastin and other reticular fibers. So what if you're constantly bombarding, like say someone goes to the beach too often and or if they use tanning beds for whatever reason, even though we live in Hawaii, and they expose this, their skin and integument to all this UV radiation. So what happens to reticular layer? Well, let's see, and I have to pause the video here because TLC is very strict with copyright. I'll link the video in the description below. So the co so I was like, what, are, what does she look like now? I just typed in to Google, okay, where is, this is like a crazy show called My Strange Addiction. I'm like, where is she now? Now, and yeah, in the previous love, she said like she tanned so much, she started bleeding. So she was really damaging her skin incredibly. Uh, so this episode was back in 2011 and she said when she was 20 at the time of filming. So the cool thing is I, and what we have here is that, oh, Instagram. So I looked at her Instagram and this is her and oh, she has a boyfriend now. But I think this is the same girl because I'm there's an, I I've had a hard time comparing it. But I found this image, and yeah, it looks like same eye shape, and she has the same nose and mouth. So this is like was posted this year. So this is ten years later. So now she's thirty. So she's thirty, and look at this. And I mean, I'm, it looks like she stopped doing that ridiculous tanning. She looks like she's no longer doing baking herself anymore. But yeah, look at this. I mean, the skin around your eyelids, very, very thin, not much fat. I mean, you have some muscle supporting it, but if you have very, very thin skin on your eyelids and you're bombarding it with UV radiation 
And also in that episode, she says she doesn't use goggles because she doesn't want to look like a raccoon. So her eyelids got the brunt of it, and that's why our eyelids are one of the first things to age because the skin is really thin. She is 30 years old. So again, then that dermatologist was put, and if you ever been to a dermatologist, they 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 zoom in on that. They know the signs of aging. Like like when I went to a dermatologist for her skin cancer uh, checkup once, he's like, oh yeah, I see this spot, spots. I'm like, oh my god, stop it! This is like, don't don't do that to already. But yeah, she's 30 years old. So even though thankfully it looks like she stopped doing that crazy tanning. Yeah, the damage is there as you can see here. I'll link the video in the description below because again, yeah, copyright stuff. So that maybe that would what Sam would look like if she continued down that path of tanning. So yeah, that's the infamous tanning mom. So you might have seen this on some beaches. Like you have people, I think this is it Donatella Versace? But yeah, like people who don't apply sunscreen and they tan. I mean, wow, it's like why do they look like that when they tan and continue to tan like that? Like, luckily for Sam, I mean, it looks like it just hit her eyelids, but oh man, what about the rest of your body? So this is what we call, this is what's happening. You're damaging the dermis, you're causing all this UV damage. So what happens with the UV photons? Well, we know they can damage DNA, but here's a molecule of collagen. So what if you hit collagen with UV radiation? What do you think happens? Really quick question. Is collagen made up of chemical bonds? Okay, let's see what people said. So most of you said yes, and most of you are correct. Collagen is a molecule. It is made out of chemical bonds. And again, we're made out of atoms, we're made out of chemicals, we're made out of molecules. So collagen is a polypeptide. And what it does is that it wraps around itself, and then it forms these long fibrils. So collagen, elastin, they're all peptides, they're all made of chemical bonds. So what happens is that UV radiation, again, it damages the chemical bonds in DNA. It also can damage the chem, in the terms of like 7D hydrocholesterol, that's a good example of where it's actually beneficial to break bonds. But photons carry energy, chemical bonds are energy, this energy from photons can break chemical bonds. So if you bombard collagen with all these UV photons, this can break apart collagen. If you break up the part, the collagen in your skin, it's going to lose that volume from collagen. It's going to lose the elasticity by damaging all the elastic fibers. So this is why those people look like that. They bombard their skin and their collagen and the dense regular connective tissue with so much UV rays that it obliterated all those protein fibers. So again, even though the protein fibers aren't cells themselves, they are made by cells and they can get damaged. So this is why we age our skin ages. If the damage outpaces our skin's ability to repair itself, then that's going to break down our skin. And that's why you saw that really, really crepe paper thin skin we saw on like the those people's bodies and also in the eyelids for or um, poor Sam were there. Like she said, I mean, that was her when she was 20. She didn't, oh, you can inject Botox, but that Botox ain't gonna help those eyelids. And you can't, I'm pretty sure like, those are so thin, you can't inject filler there. So that's why she, that, her eyelids probably looked like that. So yeah, this is why our skin ages. As we age, this is natural. Even if we stay out of the, out of the sun, our body's ability to repair itself kind of outpaces the damage we get as we age. And as we start aging and losing fibroblasts and the ability to repair our dermis, this is why we have start to form wrinkles. So by having less of this dermal layer and, and this particular layer and all the protein fibers, we start to lose the elasticity and turgor of our skin. So yeah. And to end with this, like in terms of repair, so what we have is scarification. I think it's kind of fall out of favor, but I'm like, wow, like impressive work, but not for me. <laughs> but something, what causes scarring? So the interesting thing is that this reticular dermis, this is where you find a lot of fibroblasts. So what we have in the reticular layer is like, what if you do this, like hopefully with a clean instrument, put a deep cut that goes to the reticular layer. Well, it also cuts a lot of the fibers and it's definitely ouchy, right? It's going to hit all those nerves, but it also stimulates those fibroblasts and the, to generate more protein fibers. So as these fibroblasts 
start to deposit more collagen, what happens is that it kind of forms these like harder structures that kind of push up the rest of the skin above that. So this is why we get these raised scars. It's due to all the fibroblasts doing their thing, repairing it, depositing a lot of collagen, but those deposits of collagen, they push the under the skin that's above it up. So this is why we get those scarification.